Hey everyone, this is Andrew, and in this video I'm going to show you how to script some of the new wavetable functionality in Context 6. I've been banging my head against the wall for the past half hour trying to figure it out, and I finally figured out the basics of how it works. So, just to illustrate for you. I'll make this a little more obvious by turning off some of the effects that I added. So as you can see, I have this mapped, if I turn off the script editor for a sec, I have this mapped to the uh, position of the wavetable. So if I turn this uh, position knob here, it moves this little animated uh, waveform control, which is essentially done the same way as the regular waveform control. Now I basically just map this knob to the position knob, as you can see down there. So this was a little tricky to do. It was very easy to figure out some of the basics for example, how to actually map the wavetable position control. That was very easy. Um, if you type in, I think, wait, uh, WT, and you eventually find this list here, engine par wavetable position, and it's set up just like any other control in contact. You make a slider, uh, so that's declare UI slider position, you set zero to a million on UI control position, set engine par, engine par wavetable position. And then it's the same usual, you assign your group, you assign these negative ones to indicate that they're not, or that, that they're on like the instrument level, or that they're kind of, these instrument and master controls are kind of ignores, um, if you know what I mean. Because this is basically group, and then I think instrument, and then master, or something. It's set up some way like that, but basically it's saying to ignore these. So, anyways, you're assigning the position control to the wavetable position, on the zero group, which is where I have the wavetable. So that handles this part. The wavetable animation part was a little trickier because for some reason, if you go to the KSP reference manual, they do walk you through the controls. So they have, for example, the visibility mode if you want to do 2D or 3D, um, if you want to do the colors and stuff for the wavetable in the background, um, but they don't actually show you how to attach the wavetable to the um, to the wavetable like UI control. They mention here use to set new flag constants after the attach zone command cues. So that's sent me down a rabbit hole of trying to use the attach zone command just like you would for a waveform and it kept giving me errors um, and the missing link I found was by opening up analog dreams copying the code that they had or not copying it but copying it into uh, text edit it and then I just kept searching for wavetable in various forms. Eventually, I came across something. Uh, control par wt zone, and that is where you actually assign it. You know, set control par. You're getting the UID or the the UI ID of your wavetable UI wavetable control, and then you're saying what you know, that you want to control the wavetable zone that shows up in that UI wavetable, and then you're finding the zone either by name or you can type in the actual um, zone number. Because if you go and contact an expert here and then you click zones, you, it'll list for all the different zones what um, zone ID they have. So <laughs> um, I felt like an idiot, so then I searched in the... Uh, KSP reference manual and there isn't anything that references wavetable zones at all. So I think they just left that out. Um, I, I hope it's by accident and not in my, on purpose. I'm not really sure why they would want to do that. But that's kind of the missing link that made this work because that actually gets your wavetable. See I have ID 1, I assign control par wavetable zone to the uh, waveform 1 and that made it show up. And then you, you're basically just assigning the size of the wavetable, the position, the wave color, and the alpha of the background. If I make this something like 50, oh. then you get a kind of a dull gray background. And if I want to make this red, now I get a red wavetable. So, anyways, uh, that's that's really it for this video. Um, I thought it would be neat if I were to just get this very simple instrument and put it on my website as a free download. 
Um, so I'll put all the relevant information on the screen, but pretty much the way that works is you go to the link below at Genera Studios. Um, you're going to have to get this instrument. It's going to say it's for sale for like 50 cents. Um, there's going to be a download code linked there. Um, just copy and paste that and on checkout, enter that in and that will make it free. Um, I have to do that with the way that um, my site manager handles downloads. I can't make a download free, so it has to do this weird uh, discount code thing. But anyways, yeah, download it, check it out. Um, I didn't see any tutorials on how to do this online, so I really wanted to uh, save a bunch of people the time of trying to figure this out. Maybe it's obvious to other people, I don't know, but it was not obvious to me at all. But I'm glad I figured it out. Because uh, from this point on, you know, you can go on start adding several different waveforms. You can add methods to switch this waveform inside of a GUI. Um, you can start mapping the other controls. Um, and I also figured out how to add and actually control replica inside of this and also some of the new reverb functionality that's built in and I you know found it all in the new uh, contact 6 KSP reference manual which I'll also link down in the description so yeah thank you very much for watching uh, leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next video bye